Welcome back everybody, this is Liz Marino 300 speaking. I hope all of y'all enjoyed the previous video, I know I enjoyed making it, and yeah, really enjoyed making it because it was my first edited video. So, let's jump right into this one, shall we? Um, today we'll be further exploring the, um, yes. So, um, Today we'll be further exploring the, um, this hung up dragon. First off, before that, we shall claim our stuff. Which... Oh yeah, it wasn't here yesterday as well. I will do that during, um, in a moment's notice. Do we have mail? We have mail. Ooh. Oh, yeah. The event, the special event. Uh, okay, I need that for something. I don't know what. Good for that. But, um, let's not stop ourselves, shall we? Let's not stop ourselves immediately, see something to collect, stops myself. of the dragon. Okay, got an achievement, always good. This one is hard to do. It should be down. Where? Oh, there. Okay. Doing that lagged my game spontaneously. Indeed, yeah, I thought so. Radio. That's up, right? Yep. I need to talk to them. Such warm ocean currents, free at last. Well now, little ones, hail from the surface. But I know not for what reason you have come to this deep water prison. But we aren't little anything. You're just way too big. Very well. 
Either way, we have broken the shackles that bound me for a manelian. That places me in your debt. If there is any further undertaking in which I may aid you, then speak. Consider it a token of my gratitude. <laughs> Pama knew you're a reasonable guy. Anyway, Paimon's Paimon, and she's Liz. And this is... Uh, actually, Paimon's not sure what you'd know him by, but we call him Monsieur Os. Ah, Connoisseur. It is you. It, it has. It is you. It has been a while. So you have came back after all these years. But sadly, you are late, by a few thousand years, no less. Oh, looks like the big guys knows you, Monsieur. Now, uh, Oz, Elsie. I have nothing to say to this dis dis to say to this despicable traitors. To to say to dis despicable traitors. Speak not so rashly, Lord. We are dragonborn. We keep our promises and betray none. Which is more than can be said for your hungry and faulty race. Save your breath, it's worth less than drowning Mayflower. Your betrayal is undisputed, whether not defeated in war precisely, because you turned up, turned against us. If you if you hadn't lost the war, if we hadn't lost our war, our nation, the Sebados, wouldn't have ah, uh, you've been gone too long, Connoisseur. The truth is not what you imagine. But I suppose that a secret plan would have been secret had the detail wouldn't have been a uh, plan would not have been secret if it had reached your ears. Secret plan? My leading army of Vanship uh, Van up to assault the capital was in fact part of Wu Soon's final secret plan. And he did all this to save the nation and the people. A man of great mortal char moral character. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Why would a ruler ask someone else to invade their country? And what little one would one such as you or I of Runius's know of Runius's thoughts? Whatever the case. Upon this connoisseur, even you should be able to define to divine its meaning. Define its meaning. Define its meaning. The gui the guiding tongue the gol the guiding golden bees. They should only heed the call of the symphony. Why would the Sobados bestow his power upon a savage dragon? Because they had an arrangement. Oh, do you know much, little one? From where did you learn that? Memories. From the memories scattered in the sea. You speak correctly. Yes, indeed. We did have an arrangement, but I failed him. I squandered his noble sacrifice. I could not make it to Domus' era in time. And so the waves devoured the whole city, and my kingdom my kinder could not escape either. How could such thing be? Hmm. If this is betrayal you speak of, then Bothonius was the true traitor. Were it not for that lying devil, that disgraceful rat and his silver tongue, deceptions, how could a prince among dragon kings such as I, who once led our armies after the age of the ancient dragons, have been beaten so easily. That devil first falsely claimed to have given up the resistance on Runius' orders, saying that he had ordered the legion to cease resistance. Yet when we arrived here, he suddenly rose against us. 
now that I have much time to think on, had much time to think on it, I fear he must have learned of Runius's plan somehow, and thus was able to set up an inescapable trap and lure me in step by step. And thus my flesh and blood turned to stone, and thus did it remain for Manella. To this day, when you rescued me, Bartholius knew perfectly what a massive calamity his ancestors, would, ancestors uh, his actions would bring about, and yet he still. Could he have been trying to seize over Phobius? What? Well, was that why he committed such sins? It seems that we don't have to the full story yet. So this guy keeps calling others traitors. Actually, a traitor though. Th uh, was actually a traitor through and through. Ooh. But why? <sighs> Are, are we going to have to ask him? Paimon doubts we'd get a straight answer. Hmm, that lowstone, recalliant demon word has yet to despise, dis dissipate, has he? Yeah, and it seems he has stolen the souls of a bunch of Fontanians too. Rescuing them is actually the main reason why we are here. He said that he would wait for us within the Domius' era, where he said, uh, well, he just said he'd wait for Mon uh, for Ossie, so we're coming along uninvited, not even leaving a door, though. How rude. The Linton Inti. Hmm. Those feasible tricks and smokescreens have been set to dismay us but at the end of the day there's nothing more than glorified uh, than a glorified stone door i have not well, i may have lost my physical body but it's no great labor to take the little ones over to settle this matter watch closely little ones take that Ooh, you're pretty reliable, huh, big guy? Now we simply need to break these revealed seals one by one. If you are prepared, then let's go. Well then, Moss. Uh, well then, Ossie. Are you ready? Now that is, it, it can't. Now that it come, ha, it's come to this. We have little choice. All right then. What about you, Liz? Ready? Let's go. By the way, I'm sorry for being late to the. Uh. Didn't read what he said. I didn't have time. Time, keep up, little one.
Sorry I'm not reading the text, I'm trying to focus just in case anything happens. We finally, we're finally here, and the Dominion's aura looks more like a grand heart, though. Why did Cervados construct it like that? Yeah, nothing like the rest of the stuff we saw up there. Of course, this place was fashioned from a giant ship. It was designed to be a titanic instrument on which the symphony was to be played. See those pipes extending onwards? It would have been brought ah. No! You see them pipes which seen on the symphony lies broken in what they once were broadcast to the four corners of the earth. I think that's a- uh, sorry. The whole place is an instrument? The entire thing? Then would it be- wouldn't this entire water body start vibrating if we were to play? We might be blasted apart like tofu if we get too close. What's tofu? Wait, you've never had any Aussie? Ah, uh, then it might ex be hard to explain. We could always take you to take you to go have some next time. Wait, can cats eat tofu? The Eternal City, indeed, Runius, will protect this place still. <laughs> and just as I expected, no wonder that Brazil, shameless traitor, has endured even till this day. <clears throat> I imagine that Bofos owes him survival of the time's erosion to have laid low in this place for all these millennia. And over those long years, he gradually mastered the power of the Phobies. Oh, well now, that's why we're here. We need to meet up with that brute guy. He might just be as shocked to see us for all you know. Is that the case? Let us part ways for now. You're not coming along? You've been a great help. Ah. It was pleased to be of aid, but to tell the truth, I had no desire to see that one ever again. I wish to never hear a word from that devil in his mouth. His words are shall, and shameful are his lies. See, well, see that you do not fail for them. Besides, I could not help you even if I came with you, for I am but temporary occupant of this incor moon body, where battles to be joined, I would not have recourse to. Not only I would mind, not that I would mind terribly, there's no gain with say the loss of his season of the symphony, that rudeness that shrouded onto me. Let us part ways for now, though I cannot aid you in battle. I can use the currents to send you hence. Come to me, such, should you need such aid. Regardless, let us meet again once you have vanquished that traitor. When that time comes, perhaps I shall too have the chance to make amends for my past tragedies. Ooh. Silica was Prince of the Dragonborn Distant Power. Oh, yeah. Silica will run, run the ocean depths when you're exploring the sea of bygone eras. He will move accordingly to the body of water you are in. What's the error? Go somewhere here.
Wait, what? No, 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 no. Um, oh. oh, well. No idea what use this thing had. I want to fully explore this area, but I also want to do the mission. Consider a dear friend. I knew you would come. And the uninvited barbarians? When it comes down to it, you are not the boss of this place. Besides, it was Ossie who brought us here. That counts as an invitation as far as Pyman is concerned. Exactly. And what we've heard all about it, you know, all the bad stuff you've done. Silence, you nomes. Obstrubriant ob insects. Don't know how to say these fancy words. I'm speaking to the connoisseur. Do not interrupt. Liz, Paimon, I'll take care of this. But only I have come as promised. Honor your pledge and relinquish the souls to the surface dwellers. Of the surface dwellers. They do not deserve to suffer or an unforeseen calamity. The grudges between us should stay between us. You call this unforeseen? Have you not looked up upon, uh, upon your kindred? They lie trapped in these lichens, waters, like walking corpses. And then they're not supposed to walk to walk upon sunlight shores. In my brief interim of the of the surface folks is a disaster bearer of rhythm and reason and then you call the Manelia long suffering of our kind listen and listen well the judgment of the surface people has only just begun no <laughs> who has imprisoned you ah the one who imprisoned them was you and that, and it was you who turned our kin into monsters. They once had a choice, so long as we discarded our old grudges. The mistress of waters agreed to accept to into a new nation. <clears throat> but you used them, took advantage of their plans, their trust in you. You turned them into your tools of your ambition. That was their choice. They choose the old order, not the honeyed, honeyed death you bore. And they, and just as they gave on unto us the conducting batons, batons the service bestowed upon them, so too are we duty bound to lead them unto the correct path. How dare you swagger, you shameless traitor, who betrayed the Sibos, Sibos, Sibobatus, Sibidae, 
Sibos trust and led our nation to ruin. Hearts, I hear that vile dragon slander in your words, and you would have believed foe of our nation rather than your kin and Conrad's. I serve no god, no king, only mighty Rumia, and our noble ideals. Rumius proved unworthy to reign supreme. From the moment he uttered the preserved command. And so there are no traitors, if anything. Uh, there are no traitors. If anything, it was I who rescued our nation from his error. He concluded. He concluded with our foe, commanding the vile great to flatten our cities. He even attempted to destroy the Grand Synchrony, which would have co-signed us to live under Fontanian's yoke once more. How could I have stood aside and done nothing in the face of his madness? And so you betrayed him. You shut the Intunum Inti. And in the end, Phobius. Phobius's power went out of control, and the royal palace sank to the depths. Will you not open your eyes to the truth? It was Rumius who betrayed us, betrayed Phobius, and the true prelude pre to tra tragedy. I already spent a thousand years struggling to recreate the symphony of the past, weaving the broken melodies together in, a deep, in the deep waters, just to recreate what you do now. No, in your hands, it has become harsh, and the dis disorient voices of agony and hate denounce your violence. Ha! Who decides what's harmonious or not? It is not absolute power. Rumius bent the knee to savages and odious dragons precisely because he failed to comprehend this. But it matters not. He intervened. He in. He inverted. This inverted world shall soon be right, and I shall become the new surveyors. That's impossible, Bathonius. You are not. You are but a mortal human. Humans can never become gods. Ah, but ah, connoisseur, you forget. Was Rumius' ideal not for humans to become gods, to seize their own destinies? Do you not remember? Do you did the rites we researched and recorded in the golden castrum, castellum, not chart a course to that very destination? But we did not know then what laid beyond. We had known thousands of years ago. We, the times have changed. Things are different now, connoisseur. Join us. May my preparations are complete. Only together can we accomplish this deed. I have rid my soul of all impurities, obtaining a true will. The stairway to heaven is but a single step away. I merely need to gather all the wills that had been scattered through the waters. Yes, even yours, which Rumius personally severed. Severed. Two minds shall merge into one, and thus shall Rumia be whole once more. Once more, clad in a mortal form, infused with refined steel and stone. No. I, uh, I, no, we shall take on flesh once more, and, the new, and a new surveyor shall be born. Not only that, I shall also gain that which, room, that which even Rumius could not obtain, the power to change the very essence of this world. I will turn back the wheel of fate, usher the old world's return and bring justice to the land. Surface dwellers shall submit to our wills, as they must. It shall be 
as the hind says, and when they use their will to command, the rest shall bow down and listen. You know I will not acknowledge you. You have defiled his ideals. I will uphold my own justice. Hmm. It matters not. You will understand once more you enter the Phobius' melody, and then you shall join us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, my phone. I need to, I need my phone to... No! Damn it. This is Domanius's aura. I have entered Rumius's memory again? No. The atmosphere is different from before. Welcome to my place, Outlander. My symphony. Bartholius. Do not be startled. Have we not met a f prone, uh, met a time, and one, and more once than once, whether through my phantom in the real world, or the memory places Rumius has left behind? This is no phasm of Rumius's memory. This is my symphony, my golden stage. I knew it. Wows of sorrowing ring off every wall. Is that so, Outlander? I know not from whence you came. It seems you are not human, birthed from primordial waters, nor are you any surface being at all. I cannot see the colour of your soul, nor can I touch it. Nonetheless, this is not your war. My vengeance against the surface dwellers is none of your concern. I know not why you hinder our work. What justice in this world? Justice? You can't be serious, can you? You may possess power that even I cannot perceive, but you will be naive, Outlander, to think that brute force alone will defeat me. I have long become one with a symphony that fills the deep seas. Even if you should destroy my physical form, so long as the agonized waters flow, as so long as the memories of vengeance do not fade, my wish shall not perish. I shall remain a nightmare in that that in nightmare that haunts this world, unless you choose a, as unless you choose as connoisseur as that stray cat did, exiling oneself to become a jailer, a jailer of the old world. But I do not believe that one distinguished as you would do so. Forsake the superfluous symphony of yours. Should the guilty not be punished, is that not justice? Guilty, you say? They are innocent. No Fontanian is, is innocent. They are the spawn of our barbarian foes. Their ancestors seized from us the realms that should have been ours. By right, and they must pay the price for that original sin. Have you anything else to say, Outlander? For us. Ah, uh, but can your short friendship surpass the span of our kingship. Connoisseur and I, we were new humans, golems, crafted by Rumius's own hand, and we are the final survivors. Compared with our king, his soul is like an incor. Other than myself, he has true will. And only when we are combined can we become the complete self, so that our wills are uh, so too are our wills one. The opera final act shall see him return to us. This is his fate. Have you anything else to say? Those people, neither I. They are neither your kin nor your subjects. On the contrary, so far 
are you above them? That they will, they may as well be ants, perhaps not even that. The weak should submit to the strong. Is that not the law of this world should follow? And yet you say you will protect them? Is this your boundless mercy? Or are you simply, or simply fall? Since you insist on sabotaging my plans, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to stay in my place for a while longer. I cannot detain you for long, of course, but it should be long enough to let us meet again when I become a god and sit upon Serbos' throne. Before that, I let a little ensemble, an ensemble occupy you for the time. Level 80s. Wait. Ah, come on, I didn't kill him. Liz, I found you at last. This is his normal form. Connoisseur, ha. Huh. Well, you might have seen me in Cerberus' memories, I, but I believe this is our first time meeting in this manner. Time is short. Maintaining this form in Barthuma's symphonic place is not an easy task. Let's keep this brief. Where are we exactly? This place is crafted by Bathonius, the manifestation of his soul. This is maintained just as Servius's memory he entered before, by the grace of the symphony's might. Yes, he used the music power to pull us in. I suspect that Domius's aura is too close to the heart of the Phobius, allowing him to directly influence the present world. If we truly allow him to obtain power that surpasses reality, he might even pull the entire service world into this space. When that happens, his delusions will be replaced with the real world, and Fontaine will revert its appearance from thousands of years ago. Just like what happened to Preacher. No, I suspect it would be worse. Will he really become a god? That depends on the definition. It is not hard to f shape false fantasies, but he will find t transcending fate futile. You truly, it were truly that simple. Then those thousand years ago, we should have have already su already succeeded. All he can do now is drag more innocents into this nightmare of his making, turning them into walking corpses, corp-like puppets. Then we must stop him. That, that we do. But it cannot be done here. You must return to the real world. In that, I shall aid you. And what about you? Not to worry, he has no plans for me at the moment. As for me, I've just thought a way to uh, thought of a way in which we can destroy him utterly. He has prepared a mighty form for himself in the real world, and plans to initiate a ritual with Domius's aura that will have him take on flesh. As long as we can get him to lower his guard and gather this, the symphony scattered throughout the deep waters into that body, we can seize that opportunity to destroy both him and that body and will end, and will put an end to everything. Only you can do this, Liz. Phobius' melody does not sing of your destiny, and Bophonius cannot influence your soul. You are the exception to all that is planned. Perhaps that is why Sobedos guided you here. For now, my strength will not hold for long. I'll go now, my strength will not hold for long. Let us meet again in the real world, and we may yet bring an end to this long nightmare. Do I get my people back? Like, come on. Oh, 
Ah, yes. Hmm. Ah, you finally woke up. Paimon was worried sick. She thought... She thought you might have had your soul stolen by that jerk. Just like all those townspeople. I'm fine, Paimon. You better be. After you passed out, the followers and Monsieur disappeared, along with that wave of sound leaving Paimon all here alone. And then Big Guy came along, not that he helped much either. I fear that it was not up to me, but I am but a soul that dwells within the Incor, and though Rumius did not give me his final symphony, but to wield great power against Bethunius is, di uh, is a different matter. Anyway, Liz woke up. Woke Liz is... Anyway, Liz is woken up and it seems to be okay at least. But where did Monsieur go? Where does Os go and did... Uh, go? And... Uh, where did Oz go? Did Bethonius... I saw him. You tell what happened within Bethonius' soul then. Ah, uh, so Monsieur is Oz... Uh, so Monsieur Oz is there alone? He seems to have his own plan, don't worry. Regardless, we should not prove correct. Then we shall have a chance to defeat the shameless devil. But first, you must enter Domenius' aura. Well then, big guy? What are you looking at me for? Didn't you once lead the host of dragons on the attack of Rumia's capital? Getting us in Domenius' aura should be a piece of cake. You have many ideas for one so small, little one. Still, this shall not prove as a simple task as you think. The chief of strength, Dragonborn, lies within our powerful flesh, imbued into our Incor, as I am. That remains to be but a feeble beast, a feeble blessed of wills. Destroying it in an antium exhausts nigh all my power, and Dumius's aura, defended by the symphony's power, cannot be compared to the gates of a mere stone. Wait then, aren't you fresh out of options? Then, are we really going to watch that? Bothonius guy eat Monsieur up. Peace, you, peace, you rash little thing. I merely said I was powerless, but it's not so for you. The power of the symphony defends the place. The same strength can be used to break it. But the symphony that I can build is, yeah, that super powerful Phobius thing is protecting the place. And how can we possibly beat it? If you cannot beat it, then simply borrow what you need from it. Once upon a time, there, the will of Phobius flowed through the golden antiques into every corner of Rumia. Though the paths and pipes have been destroyed, if you can connect the section that lies before you once more, the gates of Domius shall open as they once did. That is written in the symphony after all. I too made some discoveries while searching for anything Rumius might have left behind. It appears the devil has yet to join some fragments of the symphony to his music, and they are scattered to this part of the sea. Come with me, and we can find them and use their strength. We might yet reverse the flow of time and return the Endwits to their original form. Oh, that does sound kind of promising. Let's move on then. So now we need to go around collecting the other parts of the symphony. I did see that there was a score here. There was another one in another place that I was in, that I went.
God damn it. Too fast, too far. I thought that was a spore. I saw another thing like that in a different place, yeah. Eliminate the horn. Oh, I get it now. That's what I was meant to do with it. Corresponding positions. So that's them. Um, hold up. Thank you. 
one's already here. I don't need to leave that. need the bee. <laughs> oh, for gosh sake, I don't have a So I need, looks like I need to trust the amber again.
Looks like they're reconnecting. Go look for the big mug. Found one that I'm on a series doing. We've got to hurry up. What's going on? Is it happening again? Yep, seems to be. I had a dream. In that dream, even mortals had free will. Their fates were uncertain. Ha, huh. it's really difficult to write beautiful music. Time to wake up from the dream. Rumius, I must remind you that in my view, both your kingdom and symphony are composed, are now beyond your control. I'll be right back. I need to go do something. I'm sorry, but I'll be a couple of mere moments.
right, I am back. I just needed to find my phone. Yeah. Yep. I thought I would have never expected much from you, those... From those created by Yustra. For the many waters and nature, uh, and nature by yourself, the extent of the dragonation, dragonation, is shocking nonetheless. The civilization, <clears throat> the civilization created by you, and you and your subjects, shone brighter than all the others in the world. But not dreams now, but deep, impudent darkness. The Atrolics committed in, in the name of civilization and order were an order were far cooler than even pure barbarism. Even the most savage and violent of this haps would never engage in such meaningless slaughter. I am perfectly aware of all of that, you say. You know, and yet you remain indifferent? Or are you powerless? No, you could easily destroy those mortals who deserve punishment if you so wished, but you cannot bring yourself to do it. You love humanity. This is a curse you bear as a useful. In, it is time for me to depart, but I will not aid them in butchering innocent mortals, neither do I harbour any desire to stop them. You promised the Yusufur of many waters, that you would use the pure water she granted to create a world of endless pro prosperity, one without conflict. I followed you to the surface. Precisely because you wished to witness that future. But this is how it turned out. You have failed, Rumius. You could not defeat fate, Fontanium. Blood shall not stain the high sea. Red once more. Such the cruelty of the heavens show to their creation. I have a plan. Oh. You always were one of many plans, Runius, but all of them lie in the dust now. Even you do not know where it all went wrong. Would you like to hear it, though? This will be the last one. I distantly recall you saying something when you persuaded me to leave the Frontier. But speak now before I return there, to the side the Yusufa of many wishing waters. Haha, -ha. fascinating, fascinating. Only you, so townsworthy, selfish, yet utterly selfish. You even look, took me into account, did you? Recklessness, how terribly rash of you, Yusufa, lord of mortals. Still, your plot, your plot pleases me. The mere thought of leading my vanship and trampling your arrogant, foolish people underfoot brings me joy. This shall be a mere ceremony, just a show. Fret not, I shall be, as you said, merciful. But you do this. But if you do this, your life as a god shall come to an end. This will be nothing left but the symphony you have considered this f have you considered this fully fully? Yes, of course, of course. The box of horrors that I have opened, so too shall I shut. Good then, I accept your proposal, and in time you should come. I shall join my strength, that of your symphony. Phobius' chain shall be broken, and your people shall be free, once more be free. In that case, please accept my final symphony. 
The city built by the harp was troubled by peeing, piping reeds, which the heavens have in store for us. It is a fate that balances good and evil. Did you see Rumius's memories again, Liz? Was it another of Mr. Evil and Mr. Rude this time? Even in dreams, that jerk is super irritating. Eh? What is with that all of a sudden? What did you see in the memory? Fascinating. Rumius' power still in the deep sea, and has not been depressed, deprived, and I, too, am here at last. Do you know what this means? The conditions have been filled. Indeed, that is why I have come here with you, to make amends for Manelia of regret. Now the final question is Phobius. Wait, wait, Paimon's confused. What are we using music for? It's nice that you understand each other at and all, but you're leaving Paimon out. That's all unfair. Tell her what's going on. The final symphony, symphony Rumius gave me, or the Relinquum, is an order for the Phobius to self-destruct. He was to sacrifice himself and unleash the symphony's power, and it would fall to me to control the primordial savage emerges that he would awaken. That was how he would free his subjects from their stern bodies and give them back forms of flesh and blood, destroying the artifact artificial barrier between races. <clears throat> He once in instructed me to reveal this plan to any of to not reveal this plan to any of his subjects, for it was only by them realizing their limitations that the procedure and arrogance could be set aside. It appears, however, that you have pierced together a plan through the memories he'd left behind. <clears throat> so What's happened? But his sacrifice was wasted in the end. Perhaps. But now that my soul has been freed, this is a chance to make amends. The lost souls of Runius' former subjects remain imprisoned in their statues. If we defeat that monstrosity, we can use the relinquent to their soul's release, allowing them to, to return to the high sea, to the eternal cycle of life and death. That way I may consider myself the cure of his wish. Perhaps that's why I came here. Indeed, Outlander. Perhaps this is indeed a fated encounter. Relinquum Finale! Okay, I want to do this. But we are missing stuff. That seems to be like a boss. If I've ever seen one. Well, it's good kick it class. He indeed did not defeat the boss or kick its ass. The file was corrupted, and now, here is take two. Our bond is strong! <laughs> Sorry, pal! Yeah. Scatter! Skyward!
you. Our bond is strong.
thing. Hold up. That other one that I got. Knew it. Come here, come here, thank you. Skyward, scatter. Seven seconds, seven seconds, seven seconds. Up to it, 
sein. Ja. Please just come this way. Please just come this way. Just come this way. Come this way. Thank you. Skyward! Got 
please. Damn it. Maybe I wasn't meant for this one. Yeah, you can say that another day. I will run, you know? Him. A reward on the road. Yes. Spend down. Jeez. Channel. I hope all y'all have a great time, and I'll see you all next time.